Lastly, forget about your reputation. Jeremiah 45, 5. This is what Jeremiah says to his secretary, Baruch. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. Genesis 11 tells us that people tend to go to the city to make a name for themselves. They get excited. They're going to come. They're going to do well in their work. And by the way, ministers very often come to New York City to make a name for themselves. Just letting you know that. You know, I got a, I'm a minister in New York City. I'm cool. I'm going to do well here. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. Don't worry about your reputation. Don't worry about your credentials. Ministers do not identify. Don't make your ministry success your identity. So this, if things don't go well, you just feel like an utter failure. You just freak out. People don't make getting a big name in New York City your main thing. Lift up Jesus' name. Hallowed be thy name. Forget yourself. Forget your reputation. Do what you can to lift up God's name. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Even New Yorkers, of course, all New Yorkers are seeking great things for themselves. No, no. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. Thank you for listening. Ordinary religious approach is you obey in order to be saved. But the gospel says you're saved and then therefore you obey. Do you in your mind say, if I obey, I'll be accepted by God? Or do you say, because I'm fully accepted by God in Jesus Christ and loved, therefore I obey? Those are two radically different orders. And what I'd like to show you is that even though both of them have obedience, hmm, are you, you obey God in order to be accepted? Or you are accepted in Jesus Christ and therefore you obey? You say, well, they're both obeying God. They're both reading the Bible. They're both praying. They're both obeying the Ten Commandments. Yes, but in radically different ways, out of radically... In 1989, when Kathy and I came to New York to start Redeemer, we prayed that after a few years, we might have 100 people in our congregation. And if God provided, see, some of those people become new Christians. Well, God did far more than we ever imagined was possible. Over the last 30 years, we've witnessed God working through the ministry of Redeemer to bring the hope and joy of the gospel to thousands and thousands of people. In the 90s, Gospel and Life was a cassette tape ministry for Redeemer Church, providing sermons to people in our congregation who wanted to share the gospel with a friend or reflect further on a teaching. Today, I am humbled by how God has made Gospel and Life a ministry that reaches people around the world with gospel teaching and how he continues to work through this ministry to renew hearts and lives far beyond New York City. As we approach the end of 2019, I know there will be many worthy ministries and organizations. If Jesus Christ was actually raised from the dead, if he really got up, walked out, was seen by hundreds of people, talked to them, if he was raised from the dead, then you know what? Everything's going to be all right. Whatever you're worried about right now, whatever you're afraid of, everything is actually going to be okay. Uh, because because you got to remember, we're not just talking about resurrected people. Jesus Christ is, and this is where Christianity is unique, we're talking about a resurrected world. Meaning, other uh, there's plenty of other religions that talk about a future afterlife, which is a non-material world. In other words, you get a consolation for the world we've lost. Mm -hmm. Christianity says it's not just your bodies are being resurrected, but the, the world is actually going to be a material world that's cleansed from all evil and suffering and, uh, and sin. And if Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, then the whole world is going to be, in a sense, resurrected. And everything is going to be okay. Everything. You don't, even, you don't know how. I don't know how, but it will be. So, uh, and you know what? Actually, it, right now, I couldn't possibly be convinced that Jesus was not raised from the dead, either intellectually or ex existentially. So whenever I'm, and by the way, but Kathy and I, listen, we cry, we, had, we, we cried a lot last mm. night. Sometimes the reality of the shortness of what we have left here just overwhelms us. And we were just weeping together and, and crying. And then you say, if Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, 
it is going to be okay. And then you can wipe your tears, but you don't stop mm. crying. Uh, it's like salt in the wound that keeps the wound from going bad. Uh, that keeps the wound from getting infected. But it doesn't mean that until the end of, you know, until we actually meet Jesus Christ, we, we still have our wounds. So they aren't going to be healed, but they'll be healed by his. So I think I still could. Yeah, I would still go back to if Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and he was, you're going to be okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Pastor Timothy Keller, the great theologian and the evangelist, passed away. And the news of his death was confirmed on social media, whereby fans and his followers posted his photos and videos of him preaching. He died at the age of 72 after a chronic sickness. He was a great man and inspiration. He was a man of knowledge who knew much about the Bible and in all his preachings and sermons he emphasized the spirit of forgiveness that we should forgive one another so that God our Father should also forgive us our trespasses. He was a great man, a man who knew much, a man of knowledge and his sermons and preachings have been listened to to all the generation and all people of different age. He was the leading pastor of the Redeemer Presbyterian Church in Manhattan and also he had a very big impact to the community as well where he lived. His preaching and sermons have touched and changed a lot of lives of people around the world. He was also a great writer about Christian theology. His real name was Timothy James Keller, born September 23rd, 1950, and was the author of the American New York Times best-selling books, The Prodigal God, Recovering the Heart of the Christian Faith, which was written in 2008, Prayer, Experiencing a Way and Intimacy with God, which he wrote in 2014, and the reason is for God, brief in an age of skepticism, which he wrote in 2008. All his writings and books read him to criminals and made him a key figure in the theology and American history of theology. Rest in peace, Pastor Timothy 